What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Wallet Monkey channel. Let's grow your wallet. Today, uh, I want to go over Langley FCU. That's langleyfcu.org. Now, this is another one of those credit unions that was talked about heavily through 2020. I wanted to do what I do, right? Consolidate the data and see where we're sitting at in 2022. So overall, I'd say that I'm not impressed with uh, with this credit union. Uh, this is a weird credit union. They seem overly conservative or confused about what kind of client or customer they want. It, it was actually a big pain trying to put together data. And I'm going to show you why, because the data is all over the place and I couldn't get a straight answer about anything really. So I just warn you in advance, the data is massively conflicting and a lot of people don't have a good taste in their mouth. The MyFICO forums are filled with threads of people complaining about just how horrible they've been. So anyways, take this as a grain of salt. Let's go through the data. Let's start off at the top. It is a soft poll for membership. Anyone can join. Uh, there is no geo restrictions. You just got to put $5 into your savings account and it can be funded from a credit card. Now, it's only a soft poll if you do the membership online. I mean, you literally be done in like two to five minutes. If you call them up over the phone, it will be a hard pull. You could lock your Equifax down, but you know, that might affect you even being able to get membership. And so they pull, as you guessed, yes, Equifax. Now, they also pull check systems. That being said, credit unions tend to pull auxiliary bureaus as well. So like the third party and, and second tier CRAs that are like um, LexisNexis, SageStream, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So if you've got all those locked and frozen, you might want to unfreeze those. And that's just the general rule of thumb for all credit unions, really. All right, so the poll check systems and Equifax. Now, what Equifax do they pull? Well, I'd love to tell you, but there's conflicting data. So uh, 2020, there was data saying that they pull FICO 5. 2021, there was uh, multiple people saying that they pulled uh, FICO 8 for credit cards and for credit limit increases because they do hard pull for credit limit increases as well. Some 2022 data, just one person I found and they're claiming that they pull Equifax FICO 9 for credit cards. So I have no idea. But the good news is hard pulls, uh, well, semi good news, the hard pulls last for 30 days and there's no difference between the departments of credit cards and lines of credit or loans. It's like the same department, same underwriting, et cetera, everything. So you don't need to get another hard pull. Whereas with a lot of banks and institutions, if you wanted to go from the credit card department to the loan department, it's a whole new department. So they would have to do a hard pull again. This is all combined. So a hard pull works across the boards for anything. And it's good for, I heard more than 30 days, but assume good for at least 30 days to double dip. They will probably ask you for utility bill, uh, proof of income documents, you know, W-2s or something like that to be uploaded. They seem conservative, but again, it's like through 2020, is that really a good indicator that we can use for any institution? No, just because of everything that was going on. We'll talk more about that in just a second. There is a pre-qualification tool, but it takes a little while for it to kick in. And the tool isn't the tool. They just start emailing you offers. So while a ton of people were like, hey, I got membership, added my five bucks, immediately apt for a credit card and was denied, I hate this bank. Well, it actually turns out that, you know, it takes them like a month or two before they even start sending you targeted offers. I guess it could be quicker than that, but that's where the, you know, the patience comes in is that if you want to play Langley, is it's I don't think it's good at all to immediately try an app for a credit card. I think you'd be better off just chilling, get the account set up, and then wait for those targeted offers because those targeted offers are uh, really accurate. Next, what is the maximum uh, exposure that they'll give you? Well, this is tricky too, because according to some 2020 data that I found, they said that it was just 40,000. So they'll give you up to 40,000 on a personal line of credit, but that somehow shares that max exposure is shared across all the credit products. So the max exposure is like 40,000. I don't even know if that's true. If somebody's, if there's a big hitter from um, that's got Langley cards out the wazoo, somebody tell me in the comments if they got any idea what the max exposure is because I heard 40,000 and 50,000. Okay, so in terms of inquiry and new account sensitivity, now you hear everywhere they're conservative, they're conservative, but they also too sometimes tended to not care about inquiries. They cared about new accounts, but they didn't really care about new inquiries. I don't know, take that for what it is. That's all the data on that. Now let's jump into, if you look up here, they got it all, right? They got auto loans, credit cards, they got three, the signature cash, which is the top dog, Platinum Select and uh, Platinum Quint. Visa, and then they got personal loans, personal lines of credit, savings, secured loans, student loans. I mean, they got everything, right? Credit builder loan. So if you did have lower scores, chances are they'd probably be able to place you with something. Um, but I think the, the game here is that the APRs are good. As low as 14%, that's a good APR. And you get cash back. So 5% on pick a category, three on gas, two on grocery, one on everything else. That's a solid card. 
uh, to get. I would say, and I would argue that there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get to this, especially with if we're taking data from the MyFICO form. So let's dive into that now. I've got four that I wanna show you. The common thread is that I approved for the membership and immediately within a day or two or you know within 10 minutes, tried to app for a credit card and it's under review. Now there's everything from I was denied, I never heard back, to I had to call them, bug them, there was no history of the application at all, to I just never heard back. And now it's it's like weeks, months later, and I never heard anything back. And all of that actually meant you're denied. <laughs> I know, weird, right? So instead of them just telling you you're denied, a lot of times there is that. You don't always get an AA letter, with it, which is an adverse action letter from them. Now, that being said, there's also some weird stories about I applied for this card, but ended up getting that card, all the way down to there were some people that got approved they saw what limit they got approved for, and it was like, hey, just waiting for the documents to be shared. Documents never showed up. They were denied. That part of it, I think, bugs me the most, is because like that to me is very shady. You should not be showing somebody all the way to the finish line and be like, yep, you're approved, here's your limit, here's your APR, and then, no, you're denied, because the underwriters had to take a final look, and they assessed that you weren't our type of uh, customer that we want. Like, that's retarded. That is the worst thing you could do to somebody. So. Um, that's gonna create like a lot of uh, a lot of resentment, man. And so this this thread here is just filled with same thing over and over again. Too many inquiries, too many new accounts. I was denied. Blah blah blah. Okay, next. Here's a longer version of a similar story. Langley has been a tough cookie uh, lately. This is in 2021. So the last thread I showed you was 2020, which they seem to be working with limited staff through uh, through COVID. 2021 things didn't really seem to get better. This is basically the longer story. You instantly approve you online conditionally. Everything seems okay. And they'll let you know how much you are approved for and even let you know how much you're approved for. However, this approval means not much at all because their lending credit department would always do manual underwriting afterwards a day or so later. And if they see uh, you have too many new accounts or too much available credit, then they'll either deny you or give you a very low starting limit. And when they deny you for this reason, they won't actually tell you that on the adverse action notice, rather they would put other reasons like couldn't verify your documents such as identity, address, and employment. This happened to four of my friends, including myself. Okay, so there you go. There's that story. I was instantly approved, received a call the next day stating they would email loan docs to sign, never got email. Played phone tag for several days, finally got a rep on the phone. She said, sorry, you were denied. Again, this thread filled with similar stories. Weird, right? Now, lastly, I wanna share with you two specific stories with data points, right? So this guy was actually uh, denied as well, and I thought this was crazy because he's actually got a really, really good, looks like he's got a good profile. Average age of account, seven years. EQ V3, 819, FICO 9, 818, bank card score 8, 833. I mean, dot, what is that? Maybe he meant DTI, 8.3% or utilization maybe. Hard inquiries, two by 24. So I mean, he had a solid profile. Maybe he had too much credit. That's what something uh, like this tells me because in the credit union game space, you gotta understand is that a lot of times if you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in credit, and you're barely using it, meaning that your utilization is low, they'll actually use that against you. They don't want you as a client, and we've seen this time and time again. So here's probably the epitome of that, is this guy here, proved tentatively, just called uh, since they didn't give me a response to my application to their signature cash back visa. The lady in lending was rude, started laughing with a coworker and said, your funding officer will be in contact and hung up, and didn't say a starting limit or APR. Now here's what's interesting about this guy, He's at $985,000 unsecured. So he's hoping that he gets it. And then like, we've got a lot of uh, high level guys from my FICO that, have, that are like chiming in on this. Basically he thought that like, no, you wouldn't get it at the time. He had 650 in personal unsecured and he got denied. And then here's another moderator jumping in. Not sure what the outcome will be. Uh, when I tried Langley and I had much, much uh, higher total credit limit than you at the time, I couldn't get past first base. That's when I realized that EQ was split, most membership apps turned into crickets, and the membership service folks were not sure what was going on. Then I read about the total credit limit piece uh, in a variety of forums, and I was glad things went the way it did, which basically that's what I just said, is with credit unions, when you have a super high total credit limit, a total credit line across all of your cards, they tend to uh, not want you. In this case, this guy had a ton, but it turned out that he was approved for 5K. He got a different card than what he wanted, I guess? Yeah, or the card. So I don't know what card he ended up with, but 5K, rep verified my income, uh, utility bill, verified my identity, et cetera, et cetera. 7% interest, that's pretty good. He asked if I did joint income can qualify for more of a credit limit. And she said, um, no, sir, wait a few years, then feel free to request more. 
So that side of it, I think is very conservative. Credit limit increases are very conservative. And I guess my question is, why bother then? You know what I mean? Like when there's so many, there's 54,000 credit unions, guys, but yet Langley was everywhere, all over YouTube. Everyone was talking about Langley. It's the best bank, best bank, best bank. I mean, is it? It's just another conservative credit union. There's 54,000 credit unions, guys. And there's a whole lot that are way easier to get into, especially if like we're trying to guess like what's the magical formula for a credit profile that they want. So they don't want a guy with 800 and 500 K plus in total credit limit. And they don't want somebody who's like super low credit. So who do you want? Somebody in the middle sevens? So I don't know, like why bother trying to go through all these guessing games, jumping through the hoops when there's, like I said, there's easier credit unions to get into. There's other institutions that you can, that you could get into as well. So I guess that's my feedback on this. Langley, I don't know. I think it's a bust. I think it's a complete flop and a waste of time personally. But again, like everyone loved it for a period of time. And it seems like now that they're kind of struggling with like who they really want to bring on because I mean, that data is all the way up to, you know, a month ago. So which is it? And again, with everything that I went through trying to research this and put this all together, it's just a pain trying to figure out like what, what they even pull and what's your total max exposure. So anyways, if you've got experience with Langley, good, bad, I'd love to hear from you in the comments and check it out. We're at the end of the video. Are you subscribed? That's my question. If not, hit the red button. It only takes a second. Here's a crazy fun fact. Over 60% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed. That is absolutely insane. Shout out to our Patreons. You'll see them on the screen right now. Uh, if there's a little join button down below, it's $4.99. It's the Wallet Monkey Club. You get access to exclusive videos that we do not drop on the channel as well as a bunch of other stuff. Check it out. And uh, that helps support us. Anyways, thanks. Bye.